Now, you guys have all seen my 6x6 Big Red before, or maybe you haven't. In fact, maybe you don't even recognize Big Red because he used to be known as Black Peter. In fact, a large black truck uh, that was 6x6 with uh, Super Swampers on it, and it didn't look like it had this huge mess of wires. Now, I've gone ahead. I haven't had a lot of feedback in my build videos recently uh, or in my tutorial videos. Not a lot of comments uh, or, or interaction in the likes or dislikes. So I kind of skipped ahead. Instead of showing you a whole bunch of stuff I thought you might not want to see, I figured why not give you a little bit of an update. If you guys like build videos, please click the like button. Uh, please comment down below and let me know because I know I've been on YouTube a long time and I don't want to be doing stuff you guys don't want to see. This is the Capo Airmatic, my friends. You may have seen me install this on my Capo JK Max, that orange Jeep way over there. Uh, it's an eight scale all metal Jeep. In fact, I did a big build, build video on that last year. Um, but the Airmatic, I did uh, quite recently installing it on that. That's what it was really made for was the JK Max. And in fact, uh, these shocks themselves are actually supposed to be just assists uh, to uh, coil springs, for example. So this would like kind of firm up your coil spring suspension uh, and help raise the ride height. Now that's exactly what I was hoping to do. I wanted to have one of the first <laughs> six by sixes out there that actually had an air ride system. So uh, back in the day, I actually started, uh, or I helped Capo start their business about mm, five and a half years ago uh, and built their Tatra all those years ago. And and so I'm very lucky to have an in with their engineers. And so they actually helped me debug uh, this capo uh, system so it would blow more air out of two of the nipples right here and here. I just said that. <laughs> uh, and uh, maybe a little less out of, on the front, for example. So this one could fill up four. This one's going to fill up two in the front. And ta-da! I will have myself an air ride suspension in my 6x6 six six oil field truck. Now, this was exactly exactly what I wanted. And I know you guys are looking, all the OCD people right now are like, oh my god, the rat's nest of wires is driving me crazy. And yes, this is actually not set up exactly where I'd want it to be yet. So here, you can actually see that I'm running an MKS servo, an X6. This thing is ridiculous power. This is the HBL 599. Uh, we are talking kilograms of power, uh, my friends. So plenty of turn power with this uh, and uh, been tested in the water. It is nice and waterproof, so I don't really have to worry too much. Uh, so moving on from the servo, I do not have six wheel steering in uh, this setup simply because the geometry of the truck would be wrong. It was never set up for six wheel steering. And a lot of you would be asking, why did you not put it in Optimus, which would be an ideal choice. There's my Optimus right there, uh, six by six uh, uh, track driven. But I also have to say the geometry of Optimus and the way I have the suspension set up is not conducive to having the air ride suspension like I wanted. But this one is, so this is going to be a great tough truck to have out in the snow uh, or in the mud. Uh, the only problem is, is that something as beautiful as this whole compressor system, if you've never seen it before, this is the Aromatic Compressor. I have it totally uh, screwed to a plastic pallet for mounting just at the moment for testing. It brings air in on this side and then of course distributes it, uh, distributes it out through the air nipples where the hoses connect. And as you can see on here, if I can get in nice and tight there, you can see the air admission valve and then on the other side the air escape valve. So that's like it is all controlled by a small key fob. So uh, you can do one side, both sides, or both at once, and then an air release. You can set it up for one side to inflate, or you can set it up for the front and the back to inflate. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So as I'm crawling uh, up an incline, I could actually lift up my rear end suspension to kind of help level it out. Or if I'm going down a very steep uh, decline, I can actually raise my front end up so I don't have that tipping point. I change the center of gravity. 
But I digress. What I was saying is if you see this beautiful piece of machinery here, all uh, aluminum, all, all CNC right here, you don't want to be getting any mud or water in this. Uh, it is a, com a compressor on the inside. I don't know what would happen if I got any water or mud on the inside. I don't want to experiment with it yet, uh, but I do know that I want to have this up out of the way or else I would have had it mounted right up front as an engine. But I don't think that's going to be very conducive to awesomeness because I'm going to have mud or water flying from these tires right onto this beautiful compressor. And really, it is a work of art, I think, that should be seen. It is minus 28 degrees Celsius outside today, one of the coldest months of this year so far. So I am on the inside having fun with RC today. Okay, so the air is going to go in through the compressor, get pushed out through the tube. It's going to come along to this front shock where I've actually removed the tire so you can see it. <clears throat> On the inside, there, around the top perch here, there's actually an airbag that's actually squeezed in between this outer housing ring uh, and that top perch. That airbag comes down to about here and is... Uh, uh, capped onto this smaller piston that you see. This piston has oil on the inside as well. The oil helps it move back and forth with the fluidity of the shock as the airbag is pushed uh, out. Watch this. Here comes the compressor. This is only on the front side. Come on. When it doesn't have a tire on there, it's a little bit slower when it's uneven, but watch this. There, all the way to the top. Also, like I said, this is meant for a secondary, uh, you should have a spring coil here as well, but with a little bit of time, it does fully inflate as well as the back. So the back is a little bit quicker. Ta-da! And you are gonna ask me, can you uh, let them out individually? And the answer is no, you have, to an you have to let them out at the same time, which is fine. You have to have different weights throughout. If the lid was on, it would help push it down. So the release valve is there. You could hear it re uh, releasing. So both at once. And then releasing. Beautiful. Both at once. <laughs> this is fun. And then releasing. Now a lot of people would ask me, does it have an automatic valve? Like are you worried about blowing the airbags? The answer is no. I could keep that there, it's not going to do anything. Here is a small segue or an update, right? So I got the back part on. My two cell lithium polymer battery is back there. I've shortened the tubes after this has been like fixed onto the frame. This is just a caged back area. You'll also see this is where I'm going to have the compressor up out of the way. Yes, it can still get wet, but it's not likely going to get submerged, right? So I can definitely do my due diligence there. Shush, Mr. Radio. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to go ahead after, see these are the two um, lines Two for one side, two for the other. So basically this side, these two nipples on this side are feeding all of all four of those shocks and then the other two are just for the two front. Okay, now I find that the magic of editing is very helpful. You guys get to see a few minutes of work uh, in a few seconds. So here you go, a completed truck, the low rider effect going on with my big uh, rock crusher tires. These are RC four wheel drive rock crusher tires. Uh, I'll leave a link to them in the video description box down below. Uh, but I figure if you wanted some help with the tires, you're probably asking by now, 2.2s for sure. Uh, these wheels are chrome aluminums. I know we'll have mixed opinions on uh, if an oil truck should have chrome rims, uh, but wheels really do come down to personal choice and this is what I have so I think it looks pretty decent uh, the back cage everything looking good shall we lift up the back just to be fun let's see beauty so there, now you can see if I was uh, going up a hill, it would be a lot easier instead of this flipping backwards just to inflate the back of the truck and then that way I can get up that hill nice and easy. The only thing I've noticed about the capo aromatic system is you should, on bigger trucks or, or even in the little one, I noticed moving the truck helps get the deflation to work. The JK Max is very heavy um, and 13 pounds, that will actually work on its own, but with lighter trucks, I notice you need a little bit of weight in the back to help it deflate. 
but that sure is a cool feature, right? And so if I push on it now, lots of stiffness, but it still has uh, plenty of spring to it. One thing I noticed though, and they didn't probably think of this because it's made over where it doesn't snow, a cold day like today, minus 25, you take this out for like two or three minutes and uh, your suspension will actually lose its air because uh, the cold is compressing everything and it will get a leak. It might even be in the valve, uh, now that I'm saying that, I think it's probably up in the valve here. So be aware of that. This is more like a spring summertime slash indoor kind of ride. And here's the front right here. You can see I'm gonna assist it a little bit for no other reason than they modified it for me. And with the front, it's a little bit slower, but it de it's because it's heavier up there, it deflates right away. What I notice with these ones is that it's not that there's not enough pressure, is it seems to stick at a certain point. So I don't know, I've taken, I've tried uh, different hoses, different length of hoses, and I've even taken apart these front shocks. They just seem to have a sticking point, and I don't know if it's because the rubber is so new, but I will work it uh, back and forth and see if that helps. That is totally what she said, and you heard it on RC Adventures. <laughs> So there we are guys, uh, I would take this out and uh, kind of rip it around for you. I'll do one quick rip around on the inside of the shop. I know that sounds dumb. This is more of a speeding truck. There's the front. This is more of a, a speed truck than it is a, um, a crawler. Look at that, slowly going up in the front. I like that it can level itself out. I wish I had this working just a little bit better. Just a tiny touch will help that come up, and then it's there. If I'm moving around, like actually trailing, I have an idea that it will inflate a lot quicker than just sitting here without those extra sprung shocks. Look at that, lifted right off the, right off the table. One of the reasons I would do this apart from like the inclines and declines is because just like I did a, a trail video on my backyard scale park of uh, bumblebees there, you can't see them unfortunately, very long dually truck, had a very low uh, belly plate. I went over an incline and immediately the belly scraped. If I would have had the aromatic system in there, I could have lifted it up. I wouldn't have been scraping the belly. That's exactly why I did it on this truck as well. All metal spur gear, all metal pinion, all metal everything in this truck. I notice if I do the back first, the front comes up way easier. Look at that. So I think that's kind of the secret. Get the back to go up first and then you can feather the front. Unless you're like on an incline or out driving around, which makes it even easier. Now, one thing to remember, right? You guys can hear it even. See how high the belly is right now? Well, that changes the geometry of my drive shafts, of course. So when they're like a big, huge angle like that, you're gonna get a lot of noise. But this truck is noisy to begin with. <laughs> I wanna go outside. It's minus 30. Oh, I forgot to put the lid on. <laughs> Whew, so cold.